And it's our big defense interview tonight here on India Matters. The government's senior most weapons scientist has just spoken to me, defense R&D chief. You're about to see him live here on India Matters speaking for the first time on a weapon very few people have heard about. You've been looking at images of Iran's hypersonic missiles raining down on uh, cities of Israel. Now you're about to hear the first word on India's own hypersonic missiles. That's right. India has a hypersonic weapon that's in the works and you're very soon going to be hearing even more about it. Dr. Samir V. Kamath, it's my privilege to introduce onto India Matters tonight. He is the uh, uh, chief scientist. Uh, he's the director general of the uh, DRDO, that's the Defense Research and Development Organization. Uh, basically, India's top weapons scientist, Dr. Kamath. Good evening. Thank you very much for speaking to us here on NDTV. I want to ask you first off, because we are still in the uh, atmosphere of the post-Operation Sindur uh, phase, Dr. Kamath, and it must have been a source of great pride for you to see the Brahmos in action there. DRDO is one half of the entire Brahmos uh, project. What is the DRDO doing to make this amazing missile more effective, sir? So, Brahmos is already a very effective missile. It is a supersonic cruise missile, which is a very precise missile. It hits the target where you want it to hit. However, we are increasing the range of Brahmos missile. We are also looking at making it smaller so it can be mounted on all our air platforms. Yeah. Today's Brahmos can be mounted only on Sukhoi, Mark, Sukhoi 30. But we are working on making a smaller version of Brahmos, which we are calling it Brahmos NG. And then it can be mounted on any of our platforms. So that's very interesting to hear. Currently, a Sukhoi 30 fighter can carry one Brahmos. But you've just heard the DRDO chief say that a smaller version of the Brahmos, so more of them can actually be carried. So you can imagine what a next Operation Sindur theoretically will look like. My second question to you, Dr. Kamath, what is the status, if you can, if you can share with us, of India's hypersonic missile. We do know it was tested for the first time last November. It made a huge number of waves. We are seeing Iran use hypersonic weapons in Israel right now. What is the status of India's own? So we are working on two types of hypersonic missiles, hypersonic cruise missiles as well as hypersonic glide missiles. The hypersonic glide missile is in a much more advanced state. We have done one development trial and we expect that in the next two to three years, we'll complete all the development trials and then it should get inducted. The hypersonic cruise missiles is a technology where we have recently proven scramjet propulsion for more than 1000 seconds, which is a major breakthrough. Yes. And we hope that the government will sanction a program to convert this scramjet propulsion into a hypersonic cruise missile weapon system. My estimate is it will take about five to seven years before it can be inducted. What other future missiles is the DRDO developing, Dr. Kamath? I asked that in the context of, uh, you know, the Akash missile, the Brahmos missile, several other weapons that are from the DRDO stable, uh, seeing combat just now during Operation Sindur. So what are our future missiles looking like? So we are working on a variety of missiles, air-to-air -air missiles, where we are going for higher ranges than our present Astra, which we call it now Astra Mark II and Astra Mark III. We are looking at air-to-ground missiles, which are known as Rudram II, Rudram III and Rudram IV, which will have a increasing ranges. These are air to ground missiles. Then we are looking at variety of surface to air missiles for air defense applications. You are aware of our program Kusha. We are also working on a directed energy weapon for anti-drones. So this will be based on both lasers as well as high power microwaves. Then we are working on variety of gun systems, ATAGS is already inducted, 
we are looking at how to mount ATAGs on a moving vehicle which is a mounted gun system and we are working on a li light tank. Yes. This also we have completed our development trials and it should start user trials soon. Then for the our naval applications we are looking at a lightweight torpedo, a heavyweight torpedo, variety of mines. So I think our pipeline is quite strong mm. and in the next two to three years, several of our weapon systems and sensors will get inducted into our services. Dr. Gamath, I must ask you tonight about, uh, you know, fifth generation and stealth fighters. Uh, you know, yesterday on India Matters, we uh, did report that uh, Pakistan will be receiving the J-35 stealth fighter from China very soon, long before India gets its hands on any of these kinds. We do know that the AMCA is an indigenous effort to build a stealth fighter. Can you tell us where that is in terms of progress, sir? So, fifth generation aircraft was sanctioned to us by the government in 2024. We have started work on it. This is known as advanced medium combat aircraft yeah. and we are looking at a new execution model for AMCA. As you are aware, earlier all our platforms such as LCA Mark 1, LCA Mark 1A and LCA Mark 2 mm. were done together partnering with HAL as our production partner. But in the AMCA's case, we are looking at uh, expression of interest to identify a partner. This partner can be HAL, can be a private sector or it could be a joint venture between a HAL and a private sector or between two private sector companies. And my final question to you, Dr. Kamat, because I know you're busy. There are all these projects on your hands. I wonder how you get any time at all. But the big lessons learned... Uh, from Operation Sindhu. Like I said at the start, we've seen so many uh, Indian-made, Indian-designed weapons uh, deployed in combat action, in the heat of the action of Operation Sindhu. Any lessons you'd like to share with us tonight? I think a lot of lessons have uh, been learned from the previous conflict and we are seeing how to implement these lessons in our future weapon systems. It is very clear to us now that all your weapon systems have to work in an electronically denied environment. So your systems will be denied GPS, they will be denied their communication. So we have to develop weapon systems which are fully autonomous, which can work in any electronically denied environment. Dr. Kamath, uh, thank you very much for your time. We wish all of your teams, all of your brave scientists, men and women uh, in the capital, across the country, in different parts of the world really, the very best in building India's next family of weapons. We salute you, we thank you and we are grateful for the incredible work that your teams have done.